1922, <laughs> Milwaukee. Correct. Let's go back to when you were a little boy. What can you tell me growing up? Well, uh, growing up, uh, shortly after I was born, uh, maybe about seven, eight years later, we hit the Great Depression. And my dad was a barber, uh, was a barber all of his life. And uh, it was a tough going uh, where people today wouldn't believe that when you found a piece of cardboard on the, uh, on the road, you took it home so your, your dad could make a uh, insole for your shoes. Uh, or went to, uh, my mother went to the, barber sh uh, to the butcher shops and uh, you got uh, uh, soup bones and you didn't have to pay for them and you scraped what meat you could off of there for the protein in the meat. Um, probably the worst experience that I can imagine at that age, uh, the folks lost the home and they moved into the back end of the barber shop and they strung wires and hung sheets that we had uh, a bedroom for. My brother, sister, myself, my mother had a kitchen, the folks had a, uh, a little bedroom for themselves. And that lasted about a year, and we finally got back on our feet and back, moved back to home. Um, Did you, were you aware of the hardships at that time? No, no. This was just everyday normal life? Yes, yes. It's, um, you saw so much of it around you, and uh, why it didn't sink in, uh, I still don't know now, other than my mother was a very loving woman and uh, I know she protected us a lot of ways. Uh, probably another thing, very great. Uh, my mother went to work as a waitress in, uh, in, uh, uh, in a restaurant. And she would go to work at 10 in the evening, work all night, and come back by 7 in the morning to get us off to school, get my dad uh, off to work. And then she went to bed and she was still up to make dinner for us uh, and uh, make sure we went to bed, then she went to work. That was a tough, about four years, five years. Your grandparents, do you remember them at all? Oh yes, my, uh, my grandfather was at our wedding uh, in 1945. Uh, my grandmother, uh, the only thing I remember about her that uh, she rolled, she ruled with an iron hand, uh, the way I guess most uh, 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 older Jewish women did at that time. <laughs> what, what did your grandfather do for a living? He was a blacksmith. And uh, I, uh, oh, now you bring this up and so many things come, come to mind. I must have been about nine, ten years old. And I used to go down to blacksmith shop with him. And um, Passover was coming. And um, he picked up all of the silverware in the house, brought it down to the, uh, brought it down to the uh, shop, started up the uh, forge and got a piece of metal, white hot, and uh, which was the kosher, how they koshered their, their silverware then. And uh, he's standing there and he says, Dovid, come to me, ich darf koshern dein Sing. And I took off like a, like a bee and ran on home. David, come to me, I've got to kosher your tongue before he did it to the, uh, to the uh, thing. And Yiddish was spoken in the house primarily. I think I learned Yiddish before English. But when the folks wanted to talk, they spoke Russian. And we never lived or I never did learn Russian at all. Now, now were your parents born in this country? No. Where, Both, where were they from? My, from from, uh, from Russia. My mother was born in Odessa. My dad was born in Ekaterinoslav. And they came here, I think, around. Now, there's one part that I'm sorry that I never dwelled any deeper. Uh, I would say around 1907, 8 or 9 in that area. And there was... Uh, now, did they know each other before they came here? Oh, yeah. They, they knew each other in, uh, in uh, Russia, but when they got here, the, uh, my mother was the youngest, and they kept bouncing her. She, they had two sisters who were already married. They went to that home for a while, and went to another home for a while. They had an uncle up in Canada, 
And when he finally came back, the court stepped in, and my mother became a ward of the court. And uh, uh, this goes back so many years. And she met my dad, and my mother was 14 years old, and they got married. Mm. And uh, I used to tease her uh, that uh, I was born 10 months later. And uh, <laughs> she says, what did I know? I was 14 years old. But uh, it, it was a good life. It was now, a good life. Now, did they come with their parents, or? It was, um, they came with, my, my grandfather was here already. And he had, uh, how they made the arrangement that uh, they got the four kids and my grandmother back to the country here, back to the States. Right. And uh, then they were all together. And did they settle in Milwaukee? They settled in Milwaukee. Why? Uh, I guess because my, my grandfather was a, uh, uh, on the maternal side, was a uh, machinist. And um, he worked for one of the big factories in Milwaukee and had a good job. And, uh, but unfortunately he was killed or died because of an industrial accident where he got his arm caught in a machine and they dragged him into the machine and killed him. Tell me about your grandmother. Uh, my grandmother was a, uh, Oh, if she was about maybe five foot uh, two, five foot one, really roly poly, uh, good spirits all the time. Uh, I had to live in the house with them because that was part of the marriage agreement with the judge that my mother, my mother and dad, had to live with his parents until my mother reached her majority. So we were there six years and uh, literally grew up with her too. And uh, uh, it was, I want to say a typical Jewish home that I know. And uh, uh, I had two uncles that lived in the house with us that would, I had three uncles, they were all pharmacists, brothers of my dad. My dad turned out to be a barber, that's what he wanted. And uh, we, we, the whole family had a terrific sense of humor. Yeah. And when we got married, Jerry didn't know what the word humor meant from her family. I'm stepping on her toes a little. <laughs> now, um, when you were young, did you guys ever take a trip down to Chicago? 1933 to the World's Fair. What was that like? I don't remember a whole lot. I got tired. I didn't sleep all that night because it was going to be my first train ride. And we got down there, and by mid-afternoon, I was so tired, my dad was carrying me most of the time. <laughs> and, but I do remember going and falling asleep on the train, coming back to Milwaukee. Yeah, yeah. What did you do for fun as a little kid? Uh, live, growing up in, this, in, the, uh, in uh, Wisconsin, uh, we used to do that on a Sunday, uh, on, on a Sunday morning, my folks never owned an automobile. And uh, one of her sisters, uh, their family had an automobile, and they were very close. They would set up a map of Milwaukee County in the basement, and they would throw a dart. And that's the lake we would go to. And there are a lot of lakes you yeah. go to at that time. Yeah. And uh, it was a big picnic it's just about every, every Sunday. What was the uh, grammar school you went to? Uh, William T. Sherman. Okay. I remember that, and that wasn't that far from home, which reminded me of something. I had a lot of friends, a lot of good friends, but um, we were living behind the barbershop at the time, and I didn't want anybody to know, I guess I was ashamed, that I would not go directly home. I would take another route home so my friends didn't know where I was going for the house or home. Yeah. Now, did it ever get better? Did it ever change? Did oh, yeah. Uh, got a home then again. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. and uh, uh, we started our life all over again. High school, where was that? In Milwaukee, Washington High. I was a uh, a jock, uh, first string varsity football. Uh, the Jewish Community Center there. We had a a group of fellows. We called ourselves the Gladiators, and we uh, participated in all of the sports. And we had 
one member, one gladiator that excelled in swimming or track or whatever, basketball. And uh, that was from primary lifestyle. Also, there was a, uh, a Jewish fraternity, uh, which was really outlawed in Milwaukee, but uh, there were a lot of them. We had a Jewish high school fraternity, and that was our social life the dances and the dates and everything else. Now your mom was so young in age when she had you. Was that ever an issue as you got older? I mean, was she tough on you? Easy no, on you? no, she was too easy on me. Um, when I was in high school, uh, I went shopping with her. This is an incident that comes to mind. Uh, she went to look for lingerie and uh, uh, the old Schuster store in Milwaukee. And I stood in the aisle, and she went into the uh, laundry, and the uh, sales associate came over and said, your husband can come in too if he wants to. <laughs> and that's when I said, Mom, it's time to go home. <laughs> <laughs> now, af after high school, was it on to college or into the service? Uh, it wasn't on to college. I went to work, and uh, I went to work for Alice Chalmers in Milwaukee. And uh, I was a mach machinist apprentice and uh, uh, I was in rock crusher division. The, uh, when the war broke out, the Navy was in our shop almost the next day, and uh, they took my machine away. There was only two of us working on that in 12-hour shifts. They turned it into a, uh, uh, a machine that made turbine housings for the Navy. And uh, when the war broke out, uh, I hadn't registered for, at that time, you didn't have to register for the draft until you were 20. And I hadn't registered yet. And it took me five months to convince my mother and dad to sign my enlistment papers uh, so that I could go in and choose my branch of service and what I wanted to do. And uh, when I went back and told my bosses at Alice Chalmers, they said, well, you're leaving a machine my, my uh, uh, draft board said, you'll be exempt until we run out of fellows your age, and then we have to take you. And I went back, told my bosses that, and uh, I enlisted uh, about a week after that time. Okay, and you were in the service four years? From uh, 42 until 46. Okay, so this was wartime. And oh, this was wartime you already. You did not have to uh, see action. Where were you? Uh, I went to one school and they made me an instructor. I went to another school, they made me an instructor. Went to a third school, they made me an instructor. And when I got into a group and a squadron, I had surgery and it kept, they took me out of that group. I was an electrical specialist. And uh, uh, that group went overseas and I couldn't go with them. So I went into another group and started training all over again. The day I was supposed to leave, they declared VJ Day and all the orders were suspended. So I guess I was lucky and yet uh, it's a funny feeling. I mean, all of my friends went, all, everything. And here I am enlisted early to go and never went. When did you meet Jerry? I met Jerry in 1940, August 4th or 6th. August 4th. I'm being coached here. I told you. <laughs> <laughs> and then when did you guys get married? In 1945. Okay. But during that interim, physically, we saw each other for 10 days. Every time I was stationed in the western part of the United States, Union Pacific, which is Omaha's headquarter, we went through there and I got off and spent a couple of days with her and then went home. Now the war ends, you come back home, so where, what are you going to do? Where are you guys going to settle down? Uh, we settled down in Milwaukee and I went back to work for Alice Chalmers. And then the decision came uh, for school. And I thought hard and long about that. Jerry did also. And I still say it's one of the biggest mistakes I ever made in my life, not to go back to school on the GI Bill. And I guess which was in, just embedded in me 
the old country father, you have a family, you're married, that's who you take care of. And uh, uh, it still was a big deal. The only other thing I feel was a big mistake, I loved the military. I wanted to stay in. We had a big fight and I lost. <laughs> um, what brought you to Dallas? A job. Uh, when was this? 19, it's about 40 years ago. My 1972. <laughs> now, was that a culture change or shock or anything? No. Down here? Uh, I went to work for the Woolens family in Corsicana. Okay. We had to live there first. And that was not a culture change. That was an Orthodox Jewish family also. But when you were hired by them and you proved yourself, you became a family, a member of the family, not an employee of the business. And they're super, super people. Um, your boys, they were born up in Milwaukee or down here? My boys were born in Leavenworth, outside the fort. In Kansas? In Kansas. Okay, so when you were in the service then? No, I, we, we, I was out of service by then. My oldest boy was born in 1948. And uh, my youngest also was born in Leavenworth, which we used to get a lot of teasing about that from friends back home. <laughs> So now, what were you doing in Kansas then at the time? Uh, in, Leavenworth, oh, in Leavenworth, I was in the uh, war assets business, buying uh, Army-Navy war surplus and selling it. Okay. And then we turned it, when we couldn't get that anymore, we turned it into a, uh, a men's, uh, men's shop. Did you guys have a, an involvement with the Jewish community in Dallas? We were one of the 13 families that started uh, Anshe Emet which is now Anche Torah. Um, I was the first president of uh, Anche Yemet. Uh, Jerry was, uh, had 13 families to work with and tried to uh, uh, get the uh, congregation built. And today it's up to 500 families. And uh, we're still very active in the synagogue. Now in your lifetime, was there an invention that came along that you went, wow, how did we ever get along without that? Every day. Uh, <laughs> uh, I saw a book, uh, Things We Don't Need Anymore, and in the book uh, I remember a few of them. One was the, the engineers used to use a slide rule. You don't see it anymore. Uh, fountain pens used to have a bladder in them. You see a few, but not that many. Uh, I still can't wrap my head around the uh, uh, Kindle. Right. How you can order Kindle and that thing comes through the air in the Kindle and you can read it. I mean so much of that uh, it, it's just beyond me. Yeah, just yeah, beyond me. Yeah. You remember getting your first car? Yeah. When was that? It was when I got out of uh, service. It was a 1940 uh, Chevrolet. What did you pay for it? Well, I bought a brand new one shortly after that, and I paid $978. For a brand new car? Brand new car. It's changed a little bit. That's one of the big changes, right? <laughs> now, in your lifetime, you've lived through so many remarkable events. You know, you talked about the Great Depression, obviously World War II, uh, the President Kennedy assassination, the moon landing, something good in 1969 for the first time, uh, of course, the tragedy of 9-11. Was there something on the national scene that really stood out in your mind? You go, I know exactly where I was the day it happened. Uh, Kennedy's assassination, yes. I was, on, I was in an elevator, and uh, they were piping in music, knowing they stopped it, and they came that. And by the time I got to the office, it, uh, uh, I mean, everybody was shocked. Um, uh, one, I'll, I'll say one thing and not be specific, but there is so much I feel that at my age, at 92, uh, I try not to be cynical what I see happening now and what I saw happening then. The wars, I don't call them war, the police actions. I mean, the war I was in is a war that we won. The police actions are still going on. And the cynicism comes from 
how, how, how the people in Washington, our representatives, can think that they can turn over governments that have been for 2,000 years just to say democracy and you're going to jump. Looks what happens. David, you and Jerry have the two boys and four grandkids. What advice does Grandpa have for the next generation? Uh, well, my grandkids uh, are well into their into their careers. Uh, my my uh, my youngest son, uh, Ron, is a uh, neuro uh, neuropsychiatrist. My uh, oldest son, uh, who's 67 now, uh, he had a stroke when he was 58. And he had a hard time getting a job and everything else. And, uh, but both of them, they're hard workers. Uh, my grandchildren, I have a granddaughter now that uh, has her MD. I've got a grandson that is a lawyer. Uh, they're all well onto their careers. Uh, and it's the same thing. I mean, look at, you know, the parents are the product of their parents. And they will be the product of us unless they want to change things and think they can do it better. Great job, man. Thanks for doing this today. Oh, my pleasure. I'm enjoying every minute of it. <laughs> <laughs>